Arsenal FC Wikipedia article audio Arsenal Football Club is a professional football club based in Islington, London, England, that plays in the Premier League, the top flight of English football. The club has won 13 league titles, a record 13 FA Cups, two League Cups, the League Centenary Trophy, 15 FA Community Shields, one UEFA Cup Winners Cup and one Intercities Fairs Cup. The club has also won the second most top flight matches in English football history, and is the only English club to go a 38 match league season unbeaten, receiving the nickname the Invincibles, and a special gold Premier League trophy. Arsenal was the first club from the south of England to join the Football League, in 1893, and they reached the first division in 1904. Relegated only once, in 1913, they continue the longest streak in the top division. In the 1930s, Arsenal won five league championships and two FA Cups, and another FA Cup and two championships after the war. In 1970-71, they won their first league and FA Cup double. Between 1989 and 2005, they won five league titles and five FA Cups, including two more doubles. They completed the 20th century with the highest average league position. History 1886-1919, Changing Names Herbert Chapman won Arsenal's first national trophies, but died prematurely. He helped introduce the WM formation, floodlights, and shirt numbers, and added the white sleeves and brighter red to Arsenal's kit. Arsene Wenger has been the longest-serving manager and has won the most trophies. He has won a record seven FA Cups, and his team set English records for the longest win streak and longest unbeaten run. In 1886, Woolwich Munitions Workers founded the club as Dial Square. In 1913, the club crossed the city to Arsenal Stadium in Highbury, becoming close neighbours of Tottenham Hotspur, and creating the North London Derby. In 2006, they moved to the nearby Emirates Stadium. In terms of revenue, Arsenal was the sixth highest earning football club in the world, earned 487.6 million euros in 2016-17 season. Based on social media activity from 2014-15, Arsenal's fanbus is the fifth largest in the world. In 2016, Forbes estimated the club was the second most valuable in England, worth $2.0 billion. On December 1, 1886, munitions workers in Woolwich, now South East London, formed Arsenal as Dial Square, with David Danskin as their first captain. Named after the heart of the Royal Arsenal Complex, they took the name of the whole complex a month later. Royal Arsenal F.C.'s first home was Plumstead Common, though they spent most of their time in South East London playing on the other side of Plumstead, at the Manor Ground. Royal Arsenal won Arsenal's first trophies in 1890 and 1891 and these were the only football association trophies Arsenal won during their time in South East London. In 1891, Royal Arsenal became the first London club to turn professional. Royal Arsenal renamed themselves for a second time upon becoming a limited liability company in 1893. They registered their new name, Woolwich Arsenal with the Football League when the club ascended later that year. Woolwich Arsenal was the first Southern member of the Football League, starting out in the second division and winning promotion to the first division in 1904. 
falling attendances, due to financial difficulties among the munitions workers and the arrival of more accessible football clubs elsewhere in the city, led the club close to bankruptcy by 1910. Businessmen Henry Norris and William Hall became involved in the club, and sought to move them elsewhere. In 1913, soon after relegation back to the second division, Woolwich Arsenal moved to the new Arsenal Stadium in Highbury, North London. This saw their third change of name, the following year, they reduced Woolwich Arsenal to simply the Arsenal. In 1919, the Football League voted to promote the Arsenal, instead of relegated local rivals Tottenham Hotspur, into the newly enlarged First Division, despite only listing the club sixth in the Second Division's last pre-war season of 1914-15. Some books have speculated that the club won this election to Division I by dubious means. Later that year, the Arsenal started dropping the unofficial documents, gradually shifting its name for the final time towards Arsenal, as it is generally known today. 1919-1953, The Bank of England Club With a new home and first division football, attendances were more than double those at the Manor ground, and Arsenal's budget grew rapidly. Their location and record-breaking salary offer Lord Star Huddersfield town manager Herbert Chapman in 1925. Over the next five years, Chapman built a new arsenal. He appointed enduring new trainer Tom Whitaker, implemented Charlie Buck and S new twist on the nascent WM formation, captured young players like Cliff Baston and Eddie Hapgood, and lavished Highbury's income on stars like David Jack and Alex James. With record-breaking spending and gate receipts, Arsenal quickly became known as the Bank of England Club. Transformed, Chapman's Arsenal claimed their first national trophy, the FA Cup, in 1930. Two league championships followed, in 1930-31 and 1932-33. Chapman also presided over multiple off-the-pitch changes, white sleeves and shirt numbers were added to the kit, a tube station was named after the club and the first of two opulent, Art Deco stands was completed, with some of the first floodlights in English football. Suddenly, in the middle of the 1933-34 season, Chapman died of pneumonia. His work was left to Joe Shaw and George Allison, who saw out a hat-trick with the 1933-34 and 1934-35 titles, and then won the 1936 FA Cup and 1937-38 title. 1953-1986, The Long Sleep, Me, and Neil World War II meant the Football League was suspended for seven years, but Arsenal returned to win it in the second post-war season, 1947-48. This was Tom Whitaker's first season as manager, after his promotion to succeed Allison, and the club had equaled the Champions of England record. They won a third FA Cup in 1950, and then won a record-breaking seventh championship in 1952-53. However, the war had taken its toll on Arsenal. The club had had more players killed than any top-flight club and debt from reconstructing the North Bank stand bled Arsenal's resources. Arsenal were not to win the league or the FA Cup for another 18 years. The 53 champions squad was old, and the club failed to attract strong enough replacements. Although Arsenal were competitive during these years, their fortunes had waned. The club spent most of the 1950s and 1960s in mitral ague mediocrity. Even former England captain Billy Wright could not bring the club any success as manager, in a stint between 1962 and 1966. 
Arsenal tentatively appointed club physiotherapist Bertie Mee as acting manager in 1966. With new assistant Don Howe and new players such as Bob McNabb and George Graham, Mee led Arsenal to their first League Cup finals, in 1967-68 and 1968-69. Next season saw a breakthrough, Arsenal's first competitive European trophy, the 1969-70 Intercities Fairs Cup. And the season after, an even greater triumph, Arsenal's first league and FA Cup double, and a new Champions of England record. This marked a premature high point of the decade, the double winning side was soon broken up and the rest of the decade was characterised by a series of near misses starting with Arsenal finishing as FA Cup runners-up in 1972, and first division runners-up in 1972-73. 1986-present, Graham to Wenger Former player Terry Neal succeeded me in 1976. At the age of 34, he became the youngest Arsenal manager to date. With new signings like Malcolm McDonald and Pat Jennings, and a crop of talent in the side such as Liam Brady and Frank Stapleton, the club reached a trio of FA Cup finals, and lost the 1980 European Cup Winners' Cup final on penalties. The club's only trophy during this time was a last-minute 3-2 victory over Manchester United in the 1979 FA Cup final widely regarded as a classic. Crest One of Bertie Mee's double winners, George Graham, returned as manager in 1986. Arsenal won their first League Cup in 1987, Graham's first season in charge. By 1988, New signings Nigel Winterburn, Lee Dixon, and Steve Bold had joined the club to complete the famous back four led by existing player Tony Adams. They immediately won the 1988 Football League Centenary Trophy, and followed it with the 1988-89 Football League title, snatched with a last-minute goal in the final game of the season against fellow title challengers Liverpool. Graham's Arsenal won another title in 1990-91, losing only one match, won the FA Cup and League Cup double in 1993, and the European Cup Winners' Cup, in 1994. Graham's reputation was tarnished when he was found to have taken kickbacks from agent Rune Hogg for signing certain players, and he was dismissed in 1995. His permanent replacement, Bruce Ryuk, lasted for only one season, leaving the club after a dispute with the board of directors. Colors The club metamorphosed during the long tenure of manager Arsene Wenger, appointed in 1996. New, attacking football, an overhaul of dietary and fitness practices, and efficiency with money have defined his reign. Accumulating key players from Wenger's homeland, such as Patrick Vieira and Thierry Henry, Arsenal won a second league and cup double in 1997-98 and a third in 2001-02. In addition, the club reached the final of the 1999-2000 UEFA Cup were victorious in the 2003 and 2005 FA Cups, and won the Premier League in 2003-04 without losing a single match, an achievement which earned the side the nickname the Invincibles. This latter feat came within a run of 49 league matches unbeaten from May 7, 2003 to October 24, 2004, a national record. Arsenal finished in either first or second place in the league in eight of Wenger's first nine seasons at the club, although on no occasion were they able to retain the title. The club had never progressed beyond the quarter-finals of the Champions League until 2005-06, 
in that season they became the first club from London in the competition's 50-year history to reach the final, in which they were beaten 2-1 by Barcelona. In July 2006, they moved into the Emirates Stadium, after 93 years at Highbury. Arsenal reached the final of the 2007 and 2011 League Cups, losing 2-1 to Chelsea and Birmingham City respectively. Kit Manufacturers and Shirt Sponsors The club had not gained a major trophy since the 2005 FA Cup until May 17, 2014 when, spearheaded by club record acquisition Mesut Ozil, Arsenal beat Hull City in the 2014 FA Cup final, coming back from a 2-0 deficit to win the match 3-2. A year later, Arsenal appeared in the FA Cup final for the second time in a row, defeating Aston Villa 4-0 in the final and becoming the most successful club in the tournament's history with 12 titles, a record which Manchester United would tie the following season. Arsenal later won the FA Cup for a record 13th time, defeating Chelsea 2-1 in the 2017 final and once more becoming the outright leader in terms of FA Cups won. The victory also saw Wenger become the first manager in English football history to win seven FA Cups. However, in that same season, Arsenal finished in the fifth position in the league the first time they had finished outside the top four since before Wenger arrived in 1996. Unveiled in 1888, Royal Arsenal's first crest featured three cannon S viewed from above, pointing northwards, similar to the coat of arms of the Metropolitan Borough of Woolwich. These can sometimes be mistaken for chimneys, but the presence of a carved lion's head and a cascabel on each are clear indicators that they are cannons. This was dropped after the move to Highbury in 1913, only to be reinstated in 1922, when the club adopted a crest featuring a single cannon, pointing eastwards, with the club's nickname, the Gunners, inscribed alongside it. This crest only lasted until 1925, when the cannon was reversed to point westward and its barrel slimmed down. In 1949, the club unveiled a modernized crest featuring the same style of cannon below the club's name, set in black clutter, and above the coat of arms of the Metropolitan Borough of Islington and a scroll inscribed with the club's newly adopted Latin motto. Victoria Concordia Crescent, Victory Comes from Harmony coined by the club's program editor Harry Homer. For the first time, the crest was rendered in color, which varied slightly over the crest's lifespan, finally becoming red, gold and green. Because of the numerous revisions of the crest, Arsenal were unable to copyright it. Although the club had managed to register the crest as a trademark, and had fought a long legal battle with a local street trader who sold unofficial Arsenal merchandise, Arsenal eventually sought a more comprehensive legal protection. Therefore, in 2002 they introduced a new crest featuring more modern curved lines and a simplified style, which was copyrightable. The cannon once again faces east and the club's name is written in a sans-serif typeface above the cannon. Green was replaced by dark blue. The new crest was criticized by some supporters. The Arsenal Independent Supporters Association claimed that the club had ignored much of Arsenal's history and tradition with such a radical modern design, and that fans had not been properly consulted on the issue. Until the 1960s, a badge was worn on the playing shirt only for high-profile matches such as FA Cup finals, usually in the form of a monogram of the club's initials in red on a white background. The monogram theme was developed into an Art Deco-style badge on which the letters A and C framed a football rather than the letter F, the whole set within a hexagonal border. 
This early example of a corporate logo, introduced as part of Herbert Chapman's rebranding of the club in the 1930s, was used not only on cup final shirts but as a design feature throughout Highbury Stadium, including above the main entrance and inlaid in the floors. From 1967, a white cannon was regularly worn on the shirts, until replaced by the club crest, sometimes with the addition of the nickname The Gunners, in the 1990s. Stadiums in the 2011-12 season, Arsenal celebrated their 125th year anniversary. The celebrations included a modified version of the current crest worn on their jerseys for the season. The crest was all white, surrounded by 15 oak leaves to the right and 15 laurel leaves to the left. The oak leaves represent the 15 founding members of the club who met at the Royal Oak Pub. The 15 laurel leaves represent the design detail on the six pence pieces paid by the founding fathers to establish the club. The laurel leaves also represent strength. To complete the crest, 1886 and 2011 are shown on either sides of the motto forward at the bottom of the crest. Supporters For much of Arsenal's history, their home colours have been bright red shirts with white sleeves and white shorts, though this has not always been the case. The choice of red is in recognition of a charitable donation from Nottingham Forest, soon after Arsenal's foundation in 1886. Two of Dial Square's founding members, Fred Beardsley and Morris Bates, were former Forest players who had moved to Woolwich for work. As they put together the first team in the area, no kit could be found, so Beardsley and Bates rode home for help and received a set of kit and a ball. The shirt was red current, a dark shade of red, and was worn with white shorts and socks with blue and white hoops. In 1933, Herbert Chapman, wanting his players to be more distinctly dressed, updated the kit adding white sleeves and changing the shade to a brighter pillar box red. Two possibilities have been suggested for the origin of the white sleeves. One story reports that Chapman noticed a supporter in the stands wearing a red sleeveless sweater over a white shirt, another was that he was inspired by a similar outfit worn by the cartoonist Tom Webster, with whom Chapman played golf. Regardless of which story is true, the red and white shirts have come to define Arsenal and the team have worn the combination ever since, aside from two seasons. The first was 1966-67, when Arsenal wore all red shirts, this proved unpopular and the white sleeves returned the following season. The second was 2005-06 the last season that Arsenal played at Highbury, when the team wore commemorative red current shirts similar to those worn in 1913, their first season in the stadium, the club reverted to their normal colours at the start of the next season. In the 2008-09 season, Arsenal replaced the traditional all-white sleeves with red sleeves with a broad white stripe. Arsenal's home colours have been the inspiration for at least three other clubs. In 1909, Sparta Prague adopted a dark red kit like the one Arsenal wore at the time. In 1938, High Hernian adopted the design of the Arsenal shirt sleeves in their own green and white strip. In 1920, Sporting Club de Braga's manager returned from a game at Highbury and changed his team's green kit to a duplicate of Arsenal's red with white sleeves and shorts, giving rise to the team's nickname of O.S. Arsenalistas. These teams still wear those designs to this day. For many years Arsenal's away colours were white shirts and either black or white shorts. In the 1969-70 season, Arsenal introduced an away kit of yellow shirts with blue shorts. 
This kit was worn in the 1971 FA Cup final as Arsenal beat Liverpool to secure the double for the first time in their history. Arsenal reached the FA Cup final again the following year wearing the red and white home strip and were beaten by Leeds United. Arsenal then competed in three consecutive FA Cup finals between 1978 and 1980 wearing their lucky yellow and blue strip, which remained the club's away strip until the release of a green and navy away kit in 1982-83. The following season, Arsenal returned to the yellow and blue scheme, albeit with a darker shade of blue than before. When Nike took over from Adidas as Arsenal's kit provider in 1994, Arsenal's away colours were again changed to two-tone blue shirts and shorts. Since the advent of the lucrative replica kit market, the away kits have been changed regularly with Arsenal usually releasing both away and third-choice kits. During this period the designs have been either all blue designs, or variations on the traditional yellow and blue, such as the metallic gold and navy strip used in the 2001-02 season, the yellow and dark grey used from 2005 to 2007, and the yellow and maroon of 2010 to 2013. Until 2014, the away kit was changed every season, and the outgoing away kit became the third choice kit if a new home kit was being introduced in the same year. Since Puma began manufacturing Arsenal's kits in 2014, new home, away and third kits are released every single season. Ownership and Finances In Popular Culture in the community. Statistics and records. Arsenal's shirts have been made by manufacturers including Bukta, Umbro, Adidas, Nike, and Puma. Like those of most other major football clubs, Arsenal's shirts have featured sponsors' logos since the 1980s. Sponsors include JVC, Sega, O2, and Emirates. Before joining the Football League, Arsenal played briefly on Plumstead Common, then at the Manor Ground in Plumstead, then spent three years between 1890 and 1893 at the nearby Invicta Ground. Upon joining the Football League in 1893, the club returned to the Manor Ground and installed stands and terracing upgrading it from just a field. Arsenal continued to play their home games there for the next 20 years, until the move to North London in 1913. Widely referred to as Highbury, Arsenal Stadium was the club's home from September 1913 until May 2006. The original stadium was designed by the renowned football architect Archibald Leach and had a design common to many football grounds in the UK at the time, with a single covered stand and three open-air banks of terracing. The entire stadium was given a massive overhaul in the 1930s, new Art Deco West and East stands were constructed, opening in 1932 and 1936 respectively, and a roof was added to the North Bank Terrace which was bombed during the Second World War and not restored until 1954. Highbury could hold more than 60,000 spectators at its peak, and had a capacity of 57,000 until the early 1990s. The Taylor Report and Premier League regulations obliged Arsenal to convert Highbury to an all-seater stadium in time for the 1993-94 season thus reducing the capacity to 38,419 seated spectators. This capacity had to be reduced further during Champions League matches to accommodate additional advertising boards, so much so that for two seasons, from 1998 to 2000, Arsenal played Champions League home matches at Wembley, which could house more than 70,000 spectators. 
Expansion of Highbury was restricted because the East Stand had been designated as a Grade II listed building and the other three stands were close to residential properties. These limitations prevented the club from maximizing matchday revenue during the 1990s and first decade of the 21st century, putting them in danger of being left behind in the football boom of that time. After considering various options, in 2000 Arsenal proposed building a new 60,361 capacity stadium at Ashburton Grove, since named the Emirates Stadium, about 500 metres southwest of Highbury. The project was initially delayed by red tape and rising costs, and construction was completed in July 2006, in time for the start of the 2006-07 season. The stadium was named after its sponsors, the airline company Emirates, with whom the club signed the largest sponsorship deal in English football history, worth around £100 million. Some fans referred to the ground as Ashburton Grove, or The Grove, as they did not agree with corporate sponsorship of stadium names. The stadium will be officially known as Emirates Stadium until at least 2028, and the airline will be the club's shirt sponsor until at least 2024. From the start of the 2010-11 season on, the stands of the stadium have been officially known as North Bank, East Stand, West Stand and Clock End. Arsenal's players train at the Shenley Training Centre in Hertfordshire a purpose-built facility which opened in 1999. Before that the club used facilities on a nearby site owned by the University College of London Students' Union. Until 1961 they had trained at Highbury. Arsenal's academy under-18 teams play their home matches at Shenley, while the reserves play their games at Meadow Park, which is also the home of Boreham Wood FC. Arsenal fans often refer to themselves as Gunners, the name derived from the team's nickname, the Gunners. The fanbus is large and generally loyal, and virtually all home matches sell out. In 2007 08, Arsenal had the second highest average league attendance for an English club, and, as of 2015, the third highest all time average attendance. Arsenal have the seventh highest average attendance of European football clubs only behind Borussia Dortmund, FC Barcelona, Manchester United, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, and Schalke. The club's location, adjoining wealthy areas such as Canonbury and Barnsbury, mixed areas such as Islington, Holloway, Highbury and the adjacent London borough of Camden, and largely working-class areas such as Finsbury Park and Stoke Newington, has meant that Arsenal's supporters have come from a variety of social classes. Much of the Afro-Caribbean support comes from the neighbouring London borough of Hackney and a large portion of the South Asian Arsenal supporters commute to the stadium from Wembley Park, northwest of the capital. There was also traditionally a large Irish community that followed Arsenal, with the nearby Archway area having a particularly large community, but Irish migration to North London is much lower than in the 1960s or 1970s. Players Like all major English football clubs, Arsenal have a number of domestic supporters clubs, including the Arsenal Football Supporters Club, which works closely with the club, and the Arsenal Independent Supporters Association, which maintains a more independent line. The Arsenal Supporters Trust promotes greater participation in ownership of the club by fans. The club's supporters also publish fanzines such as The Gunner, Gunflash, and the satirical Up the Arse. In addition to the usual English football chants, supporters sing 1-0 to the Arsenal. There have always been Arsenal supporters outside London, and since the advent of satellite television, 
a supporter's attachment to a football club has become less dependent on geography. Consequently, Arsenal have a significant number of fans from beyond London and all over the world. In 2007, 24 UK, 37 Irish and 49 other overseas supporters clubs were affiliated with the club. A 2011 report by Sport and Marked estimated Arsenal's global fanbase at 113 million. The club's social media activity was the fifth highest in world football during the 2014-15 season. Arsenal's longest running and deepest rivalry is with their nearest major neighbours, Tottenham Hotspur. Matches between the two are referred to as North London Derbies. Other rivalries within London include those with Chelsea, Fulham and West Ham United. In addition, Arsenal and Manchester United developed a strong on-pitch rivalry in the late 1980s, which intensified in recent years when both clubs were competing for the Premier League title so much so that a 2003 online poll by the football fans census listed Manchester United as Arsenal's biggest rivals followed by Tottenham and Chelsea. A 2008 poll listed the Tottenham rivalry as more important. First Team Squad UEFA Reserve Squad Out on Loan The largest shareholder on the Arsenal board is American sports tycoon Stan Kroenke. Kroenke first launched a bid for the club in April 2007, and faced competition for shares from Red and White Securities, which acquired its first shares off David Dine in August 2007. Red and White Securities was CEO owned by Russian billionaire Elisher Usmanov and Iranian London-based financier Farhad Mashari, though Usmanov bought Mashari's stake in 2016. Krohn came close to the 30% takeover threshold in November 2009, when he increased his holding to 18,594 shares. In April 2011, Krohn achieved a full takeover by purchasing the shareholdings of Nina Bracewell Smith and Danny Fisman, taking his shareholding to 62.89%. As of May 2017, Kronk owns 41,721 shares and Red and White Securities own 18,695 shares. Ivan Gazidis has been the club's chief executive since 2009. Arsenal's parent company, Arsenal Holdings plc, operates as a non-quoted public limited company whose ownership is considerably different from that of other football clubs. Only 62,219 shares in Arsenal have been issued, and they are not traded on a public exchange such as the FTSE or AIM, instead, they are traded relatively infrequently on the ICAP Securities and Derivatives Exchange, a specialist market. On May 29, 2017, a single share in Arsenal had a mid-price of £18,000, which sets the club's market capitalization value at approximately £1,119.9 million. Most football clubs aren't listed on an exchange, which makes direct comparisons of their values difficult. Consultants Brand Finance valued the club's brand and intangible assets at $703 million in 2015, and consider Arsenal and AAA global brand. Business magazine Forbes valued Arsenal as a whole at $2.0 billion in 2016, ranked second in English football. Research by the Henley Business School also ranked Arsenal second in English football, modelling the club's value at £1.118 billion in 2015. Arsenal's financial results for the 2014-15 season show group revenue of £344.5 million, 
with a profit before tax of £24.7 million. The footballing core of the business showed a revenue of £329.3 million. The Deloitte Football Money League is a publication that homogenizes and compares clubs' annual revenue. They put Arsenal's footballing revenue at £331.3 million, ranking Arsenal seventh among world football clubs. Arsenal and Deloitte both list the match day revenue generated by the Emirates Stadium as £100.4 million, more than any other football stadium in the world. Arsenal have appeared in a number of media firsts. On January 22, 1927, their match at Highbury against Sheffield United was the first English league match to be broadcast live on radio. A decade later, on September 16, 1937, an exhibition match between Arsenal's first team and the reserves was the first football match in the world to be televised live. Arsenal also featured in the first edition of the BBC's Match of the Day, which screened highlights of their match against Liverpool at Anfield on August 22, 1964. Sky's coverage of Arsenal's January 2010 match against Manchester United was the first live public broadcast of a sports event on 3D television. As one of the most successful teams in the country, Arsenal have often featured when football is depicted in the arts in Britain. They formed the backdrop to one of the earliest football-related novels, The Arsenal Stadium Mystery which was made into a film in the same year. The story centers on a friendly match between Arsenal and an amateur side, one of whose players is poisoned while playing. Many Arsenal players appeared as themselves in the film and manager George Allison was given a speaking part. More recently, the book Fever Pitch by Nick Hornby was an autobiographical account of Hornby's life and relationship with football and Arsenal in particular. Published in 1992, it formed part of the revival and rehabilitation of football in British society during the 1990s. The book was twice adapted for the cinema. The 1997 British film focuses on Arsenal's 1988 89 title win and a 2005 American version features a fan of baseball's Boston Red Sox. Under 23s and under 18s Arsenal have often been stereotyped as a defensive and boring side, especially during the 1970s and 1980s, many comedians, such as Eric Morcam, made jokes about this at the team's expense. The theme was repeated in the 1997 film The Full Monty, in a scene where the lead actors move in a line and raise their hands, deliberately mimicking the Arsenal defense's offside trap, in an attempt to co-ordinate their striptease routine. Another film reference to the club's defense comes in the film Plunkett and MacLeany, in which two characters are named Dixon and Winterburn after Arsenal's long-serving full-backs the right-sided Lee Dixon and the left-sided Nigel Winterburn. Arsenal are referred to in the Korean drama Because This Is My First Life in 2017, when the female lead role character is an Arsenal supporter. In 1985, Arsenal founded a community scheme, Arsenal in the Community, which offered sporting, social inclusion, educational and charitable projects. The club support a number of charitable causes directly and in 1992 established the Arsenal Charitable Trust, which by 2006 had raised more than £2 million for local causes. An ex-professional and celebrity football team associated with the club also raised money by playing charity matches. In the 2009-10 season Arsenal announced that they had raised a record-breaking £818,897 for the Great Ormond Street Hospital Children's Charity. 
The original target was £500,000. Save the Children has been Arsenal Global Charity Partner since 2011 and have worked together in numerous projects to improve safety and well-being for vulnerable children in London and abroad. On September 3, 2016 the Arsenal Foundation has donated £1 million to build football pitches for children in London, Indonesia, Iraq, Jordan and Somalia thanks to the Arsenal Foundation Legends match against Milan Glory at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal's tally of 13 league championships is the third highest in English football, after Manchester United and Liverpool and they were the first club to reach a 7th and an 8th league championship. As of May 2016, they are one of only six teams, the others being Manchester United, Blackburn Rovers, Chelsea, Manchester City and Leicester City, to have won the Premier League since its formation in 1992. They hold the highest number of FA Cup trophies, with 13. The club is one of only six clubs to have won the FA Cup twice in succession, in 2002 and 2003 and 2014 and 2015. Arsenal have achieved three league and FA Cup doubles, a feat only previously achieved by Manchester United. They were the first side in English football to complete the FA Cup and League Cup double, in 1993. Arsenal were also the first London club to reach the final of the UEFA Champions League, in 2006, losing the final 2-1 to Barcelona. Arsenal have one of the best top flight records in history, having finished below 14th only seven times. They have won the second most top flight league matches in English football, and have also accumulated the second most points, whether calculated by two points per win or by the contemporary points value. They have been in the top flight for the most consecutive seasons. Arsenal also have the highest average league finishing position for the 20th century, with an average league placement of 8.5. Arsenal hold the record for the longest run of unbeaten league matches. This included all 38 matches of their title-winning 2003-04 season, when Arsenal became only the second club to finish a top-flight campaign unbeaten, after Preston North End in 1888-89. They also hold the record for the longest top-flight win streak. Arsenal set a Champions League record during the 2005-06 season by going 10 matches without conceding a goal, beating the previous best of seven set by AC Milan. They went a record total stretch of 995 minutes without letting an opponent score, the streak ended in the final when Samuel Eto'o scored a 76th minute equaliser for Barcelona. Former players Current technical staff David O'Leary holds the record for Arsenal appearances, having played 722 first-team matches between 1975 and 1993. Fellow centre-half and former captain Tony Adams comes second, having played 669 times. The record for a goalkeeper is held by David Seaman, with 564 appearances. Thierry Henry is the club's top goalscorer with 228 goals in all competitions between 1999 and 2012, having surpassed Ian Wright's total of 185 in October 2005. Wright's record had stood since September 1997, when he overtook the long-standing total of 178 goals set by winger Cliff Baston in 1939. Henry also holds the club record for goals scored in the league, with 175, a record that had been held by Baston until February 2006.
managers. Arsenal's record home attendance is 73,707, for a UEFA Champions League match against RC Lens on November 25, 1998 at Wembley Stadium, where the club formerly played home European matches because of the limits on Highbury's capacity. The record attendance for an Arsenal match at Highbury is 73,295, for a 0-0 draw against Sunderland on March 9, 1935, while that at Emirates Stadium is 60,161, for a 2-2 draw with Manchester United on November 3, 2007. Honours EFL and Premier League the FA UEFA County FAS Other Arsenal Women Footnotes Official Websites News Sites Other Two Note Flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. Note, flags indicate national team as defined under FIFA eligibility rules. Players may hold more than one non-FIFA nationality. There have been 18 permanent and 5 caretaker managers of Arsenal since the appointment of the club's first professional manager, Thomas Mitchell in 1897. The club's longest serving manager, in terms of both length of tenure and number of games overseen, is Arsene Wenger, who was appointed in 1996. Wenger is also Arsenal's only manager from outside the United Kingdom. Two Arsenal managers have died in the job Herbert Chapman and Tom Whitaker. As of May 28, 2017. Seasons in bold are seasons when the club won a double of the League and FA Cup, or of the FA Cup and League Cup. The 2003-04 season was the only 38-match league season unbeaten in English football history. A special gold version of the Premier League trophy was commissioned and presented to the club the following season. When the FA Cup was the only National Football Association competition available to Arsenal, the other football association competitions were county cups and they made up many of the matches the club played during a season. Arsenal's first first-team trophy was a County Cup, the inaugural Kent Senior Cup. Arsenal became ineligible for the London Cups when the club turned professional in 1891, and rarely participated in County Cups after this. Due to the club's original location within the borders of both the London and Kent football associations, Arsenal competed in and won trophies organised by each. During Arsenal's history, the club has participated in and won a variety of pre-season and friendly honours. These include Arsenal's own pre-season competition the Emirates Cup, begun in 2007. During the wars, Previous competitions were widely suspended and the club had to participate in wartime competitions. During World War II, Arsenal won several of these. Arsenal Women is the women's football club affiliated to Arsenal. Founded as Arsenal Ladies FC in 1987 by Vic Akers, they turned semi-professional in 2002 and are currently managed by Claire Wheatley. Akers currently holds the role of Honorary President of Arsenal Women. As part of the festivities surrounding their 30th anniversary in 2017, the club announced that they were changing their formal name to Arsenal Women FC, and would use Arsenal in all references except rare cases where there might be confusion with the men's side.
Arsenal women are the most successful team in English women's football. In the 2008-09 season, they won all three major English trophies the FA Women's Premier League, FA Women's Cup and FA Women's Premier League Cup, and, as of 2017, were the only English side to have won the UEFA Women's Cup or UEFA Women's Champions League, having won the Cup in the 2006-07 season as part of a unique quadruple. The men's and women's clubs are formally separate entities but have quite close ties, Arsenal women are entitled to play once a season at the Emirates Stadium, though they usually play their home matches at Boreham Wood. At present the women have won 46 trophies in their 30-year history.